What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash choosing beggars. Alright, this story's called, Why Can't I Get a Free Color Laser Printer Instead? My employees have been working remotely for about a year now, and like most businesses, we weren't as prepared as we could have been. I bought new laptops, docking stations, and two monitors for everyone last year, but one thing I forgot was printers. Everyone said they had a printer, so I said I'd just reimburse for toner and ink. Problem solved. Well, not really. Some had ink jets, and those cartridges add up quickly, and when people had to scan and archive documents, people who didn't have a scanner would have to trek into the office to do it. Not an impossible situation, just not a great one. And as work has picked up, it became a growing headache. Last week, I decided that we're going to let our office lease expire and go full remote for the rest of 2021. I don't think anyone wants to be trekking to my house to scan documents. Dan, not his real name, on our team is really tech savvy. He has a good multi-function laser printer that does scanning and faxing. It prints double-sided and at a pretty good speed, and has Wi-Fi support. Best of all, he's really familiar with it, and said he'd help anyone with setup. It's what he told me to buy, and it works great. Last Friday, I told everyone I was buying these printers for their work at home. A number of people have kids who are remote learning, so I said they could let their kids and spouses use it too. People seemed pretty pleased. This weekend, I had the following maddening email exchange with a team member's wife. Please note, there were other pleasantries exchanged in the email, so it reads a bit harsher than it actually was. But I am still surprised at the audacity of this woman. This woman was so adept at dodging facts that she should consider running for office. Hi, this is Wife Beggar. I'm poor husband's wife. I heard you were giving everyone printers and that you said it was okay for our kids to use it for schoolwork. Hi, Wife Beggar. Yes, it supports Wi-Fi so anyone in the house can use it. I don't know much about setup, but one of our guys, Dan, is really tech savvy and volunteered to help anyone and their family with setup. I hope it helps. Would it be possible to get a color printer? It's easier if everyone has the same model. Dan is really familiar with this model, plus it makes it easier for tracking, accounting, and supplies. So this is the best fit. I just found other model for the same money. It wouldn't cost you more. Can we get that one instead? In the long run, it does. Color cartridges cost more money. Plus, that one is slower and doesn't support scanning. The kids won't mind if it's slower, and they don't need to scan anything for school. The primary purpose of this printer is for poor husband's work. The speed and scanning are most important for him. He doesn't scan anything. Our current printer doesn't scan at all. I know. He has to drive into the office to do it. This will save him time, plus we're not going to have an office after June. He won't mind, and I've overheard you and WebEx meetings talking about the danger of one-size-fits-all thinking. Isn't that what this is? Finally, I lost my patience. I was done negotiating with a beggar. Wife beggar, one of these printers will be arriving there today or tomorrow. That printer is Rando Boomer Company property for the purpose of poor husband to do his job. Within reason, your kids can use it for schoolwork. Please have your husband get in touch with Dan if he needs assistance. Oh, I thought you were buying it for us to keep. Never mind then. First, how would this behavior be okay if it were a gift? Second, are that many employers giving away printers? I did get an email from the husband later apologizing. Let's hope his kids take after him. Damn, cool guy company people. Send in free stuff. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. I don't understand how people are comfortable asking for like just free stuff like that. That's embarrassing. All right, this story's called My Guardian Says Paying for a Drawing I Asked For Is Nonsense. Two years ago, when I started working on commissions, any kind of commission drawing, mostly furry and fan art because I like it, I used to be a bit more permissive about the price I asked for them, mostly because I wasn't confident enough. First months, I used to tell those that was short on money but wanted art to tell other people. Yes, a bit like a pyramid scheme. If I get two clients paying full price, I could make an extra drawing for less. I ended up being the official commission artist on a few dis 
Discord servers, and I got clients paying full price every week. I usually make events in which I charge a bit less for a specific topic, like Christmas themed or scary characters on Halloween, so everything was going fine. Lots of happy clients. I was fine. One day, weeks ago, I get a message on Discord at 9pm. The usual, would you be able to do a draw? Sure, no problem at all. The user tells me the description of the draws. Yes, two draws. I accepted and then started them the next morning. At that moment, the user sends me another message. How is the draw going? Very weird. It is not usual that people ask me about it 12 hours later. I tell them I just started, but I had all morning to do it. For the next two days, I keep sending this user low definition pics of how the pose, colors, and line work was going. And they always seem to be in a rush for the draws, barely talking or giving an opinion other than, yes, okay, that would work. I ended both draws and send them a low quality pic of the final thing. The person says, thanks, awesome. Do I send you my PayPal or you got it from the server? I asked calmly. Why would I want your PayPal? They answer. I didn't know you wanted money. Everyone on the server knows I work on commissions. They even have a commission board with the draws they get from me. But somehow this person was totally sure I was doing draws for two days for fun. Not even for exposure because, as you may imagine, they were specific OC draws on specific situations. I couldn't use it as an example on social media. I'll be able to pay you in two days, they said. Okay, I can live with that. The HD draws would be sent after. I see the money on my PayPal account. Anyway, until now, they were being choosing, rushing me, and being a bit rude, even when they didn't have the money. But then it went totally hell choosing beggar. At this point, I'm still amazed because they use all the choosing beggar quotes. This person started with the fact that they were on a kind of daycare half day because they had a medical condition, and they work extra hours helping at a hospital, and all their money is used on food for the sick people, plus one of the draws was a birthday present for another user, that is my friend, it wasn't birthday, and their guardian, because apparently this person is an orphan too, was gonna get really mad, but they will pay me. I said, yes, thanks. Obviously this person was expecting me to give up and say, no worries, have your job for free, you are a warrior of this hard life, but it didn't work, so they started their choosing beggar script again, and ended it with something like, I'll do all I can to pay you. Again, I told them to do that. This person gets out of options and gets their draws free. They use the ultimate feel bad for me technique. My guardian is really mad at me. She says a draw is not worth any money and has now taken away my phone from me. I won't be able to use internet ever again. Mm -hmm. I got sad at this point. They won't just not pay later, but will pretend to not be able to open Discord. To not pay ever! Luckily, as I said, the administrator of that server is my friend. A friend who fully pays his commissions, and even gives tips. And a lot of users from other servers knew about this. Choosing beggar user got banned, lost all friends on the server, and got no draws. Other good users helped me get real clients that afternoon. Hey oh must be really cool, man. You know, having that sort of business built from the ground up and stuff, and getting new clients and people coming to you. Pretty badass. I dig it. Even though furry stuff is not my cup of tea. <laughs> Alright, this story's called... My 67-year-old husband of three years will let me live in the house as long as I live after he passes away, but won't let me pass it down to my own adult children, instead passing it down to his sister and her kids and it's not fair. Dear Moneyist, my husband is 67 years old with an estate worth $2 million. His first wife died. He has a severely handicapped daughter and we signed a prenup when we got married three years ago. He has a sister who is a year older than I am. I am 64 years old with two adult children from a previous marriage that ended in divorce. His sister has a son and a daughter and she has two granddaughters. My husband wants to leave our house, which he owns and bought, before we married to me for as long as I live. He does not want my children to inherit it when I die. He wants it to go to his sister's family. Can he prevent my children from inheriting property he wills to me? The bulk of his estate is going
going to his daughter's trust and sister anyway. It's possible I may outlive his sister and daughter. I know I'm the newbie here, but it just seems a little harsh that I can only have the house to live in and not sell it if I need the money for future medical expenses. He's very controlling of his money. What do you think? The new wife with the prenup. Dear new wife, maintaining control of his money and or managing his money is distinctly different from being controlling about money. It's his money and it's up to your husband to do with it as he sees fit. That includes taking care of his daughter financially in the event that he predeceases her. Giving you a life estate or right of residence in his last will and testament is more than generous. You don't have to worry about never having a place to live. It's time to right size your expectations. You've been married to this man for three years. He is retired, I presume, and has lived a long and healthy life. As you said, you were not a couple when he earned most of this money. And in a community property state, you are not entitled to any money that was earned before you were married, even if you divorced. In a separate property state, I can't see a judge awarding you his home and 50% of his assets. You can look into a health savings account, HSA, to help save money for retirement, especially healthcare expenses in your retirement. You are eligible if you have a high deductible insurance plan, but it also allows you to shelter up to $3,550 for an individual or $7,100 for a family in pre-tax money, which is withheld by your employer or set aside by you, especially if you buy your own health insurance, and placed in an HSA each year. An estate planner can help you explore other options. In the meantime, by allowing you to live in his house for the remainder of your days does not mean you own the property. That is a win for someone you've only been married to for three years, especially given that you are both in your 60s. If you sold the house, where might that leave his severely disabled daughter if she were to need full-time care or future medical assistance? I see no reason why your children should be part of his estate plan. His daughter is his number one priority, and that is exactly how it should be. One of the biggest post-retirement expenses has been removed from your life. Although you may have to pay for maintenance for upkeep and taxes on the property, depending on your husband's will, that's a small price to pay for his generosity. You have at least five more years of work ahead of you. You will have to make them count. I certainly hope you enjoy them. What's that sound? G -g 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 gold digger! I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but she's definitely giving off those vibes. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Like, I mean, I, I, I can't really 100% blame her for, like, wanting something, but, like, that's not why you're marrying him, right? I hope not. She's Supposed to have married him because you love him and not his money. His money's nasty. You don't want it, right? <laughs> All right, this story's called Choosy Beggar Demands Free Car. Not my story, but my wife's. So when my wife was in college, her dad killed himself. Oy. Took himself out to a secluded roadside and plugged his car so he died of carbon monoxide poisoning. He was extremely depressed and figured that after he had seen his kids all grow up, he was less self selfish in ending his life. My wife was very close with her dad, and this destroyed her. And to this day, 20 plus years later, she still breaks down around that time of the year. After his funeral, my wife ended up being given the car, since no one else in her family wanted to deal with it. It was a fairly new Honda Accord, and while she was driving an early 1970s Volkswagen Beetle, she couldn't bring herself to drive the car, or part with it because it was all she had left. My wife had a roommate in college who was the classic slacker. He used to guilt her into doing his assignments, taking tests for him, and buying his food as well as quite often covering his part of the rent. Let's just call him Choosing Beggar. Now, Choosing Beggar's car had broken down some few months before this all happened, and had been driving his younger sister's car as she was living on a college campus and didn't really need to travel much. Once my wife got possession of her dad's car, Choosing Beggar immediately started driving dropping hints that he wanted it, asking almost daily what she was going to do with it, constantly saying that it was so hard to drive an older model car that just consumed gas, and basically playing the victim, and even started making nasty comments about how she was being selfish and that she must not be a real friend, all because she wouldn't give him the car. Please note that my wife's car that she was actively using was at least 10 years older than his sister's. Understandably, my wife was falling to pieces 
at this time. So to keep the peace, she ended up telling the guy that he could use the car as long as he was careful and put the insurance in his name. At some point, my wife ended up leaving college for a few weeks to spend time with her family since they were all gathering together to have a memorial for her father. So she leaves Choosing Beggar with the car and heads back home. When she got back, she noticed that Choosing Beggar's sister's car was parked out on the street and figured that his sister must be visiting. When she went inside, there was no sister, only Choosing Beggar. She thought this was strange, so she asked if his sister was borrowing her car to run errands. Choosing Beggar then went on to explain that he just hadn't enjoyed driving the car she gave him, so he had sold it and was putting the money aside to buy something that he chose, and had decided that driving a sister's car wasn't so bad after all. Suffice to say that my wife called the cops, but nothing was done since this guy had forged a bill of sale and, as she had instructed, put the insurance in his own name. She has serious trouble trusting people to this day, and has some pretty serious walls in place when it comes to friends. Sam, this is just a sad story. There was no, like, rede redemption in the end? Or retribution, I guess is the word. What? Oh man, poor OP's wife. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.